Dr. Michelle again at Valley Vet, and today we're on, I think, week three of our Toxin uh, Prevention Month or Toxin Awareness. Uh, this week is actually Toxin Prevention Week specifically. Uh, I'll go over a little bit with that at the end, but what we're going to focus on today is antifreeze toxicity. And for those of you that have either experienced it before or have heard about it, it's 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 pretty terrible. Uh, so luckily, we haven't seen it as often recently. There's been some new products on the market that have uh, basically antifreeze that doesn't include ethylene glycol, which is the toxic component of antifreeze, and have been we've had a lot less cases of it. Uh, but we did have one probably about a month ago, and it was a situation where a dog got into antifreeze that the neighbor had out. So I'm gonna go over with you uh, usually how it happens, what the clinical signs are, uh, what the diagnostic kind of treatment is for it, and then we'll go over on how to prevent it as well as some tips on some toxin prevention in general. Uh, so ethylene glycol is the component in antifreeze that basically is uh, not necessarily the part that's toxic to the pet. Uh, what happens when an animal ingests ethylene glycol is about 24 hours afterwards, they start metabolizing the ethylene glycol into these particles that actually cause kidney failure. And the problem with antifreeze is a dog or a cat can ingest it you will not see any clinical signs for about 24 hours. And at that point that you see clinical signs associated with it, treatment's almost too late and you're gonna have irreversible kidney damage. So usually with dogs, what we tend to see is either they uh, get into something like, say you have an old parked car that's leaking antifreeze, or I've had some people that uh, put antifreeze in like a basketball hoop, the, the base to keep it held down, but also so it doesn't freeze. I've had dogs chew off that cap and get into it. Uh, so there, there's lots of ways that they can find it. Old antifreeze actually has a flavor to it that's tasty for pets and I think people too. I do believe the newer products have a bittering agent in it, but basically there's this bright green liquid that tastes yummy and even the smallest amount of ingestion can cause toxic side effects. Uh, in cats especially, they can just lick the cap of it and that's enough to cause uh, antifreeze toxicity. So what happens with these animals is they ingest antifreeze and then there's this 24 hour period where they act normal. So if you don't see your animal get into antifreeze, there's a good chance that you're, you're not gonna get treatment done in time. But luckily we do have cases where people will see them get into it, they'll stop them right away, they call us. Essentially what we do for these cases is, uh, the first part is similar to with most of our toxins, if it's within a certain time frame, about a half hour or so, we'll induce vomiting and then afterwards we'll give them activated charcoal to bind that um, product up as best we can in the gut before it gets absorbed into the, uh, the bloodstream. With antifreeze afterwards, because it is absorbed so quickly, we do have to do a, a, a pretty intensive treatments to basically try to prevent the conversion of ethylene glycol into the toxic metabolites. And there's two main ways that this can be done. If you are at an emergency facility, they do have kind of like an antidote, it's called 4MP, and they will give that to your dog at various time frames that will basically prevent that toxin from binding up. Uh, with that, it's it's very expensive and it goes out of date very quickly. So most general practices do not have that online or on hand. And what they end up using and, and what we use here is, is actually ethanol. So we use, and it sounds really crazy, but we actually use alcohol essentially. And what this does is it binds to the pieces in the liver that basically will convert ethylene glycol to the toxic metabolites such that the patient will kind of excrete ethylene glycol through the kidneys instead of those toxic metabolites. So with that, basically we switch one toxin for another and we, we kind of induce alcohol poisoning in these dogs. Uh, luckily, it's a safer dose. We do dilute it. it treatment, I have never had an adverse effect with it, but it is, it's very cumbersome. We essentially have to bolus them every six hours. It's stressful for the pet. It takes several days. We've got to be checking kidney values, making sure that we're not uh, seeing any, any signs of kidney failure. And it's very stressful. It's very stressful for the pets, us, and obviously you guys at home uh, when, when this happens. So 
prevention wise, obviously you just don't have antifreeze. <laughs> There's so, there are a lot of different products out there. There's some with propylene glycol that do not cause antifreeze toxicity. Uh, if you have an old vehicle that's parked, make sure that it is not leaking. That's another big one is that people just don't know that there is antifreeze out and then they see it on the ground and their animal goes over there and licks it and we run into these issues. Uh, and then obviously if you do see that happen, catch it as quick as you can, bring it in immediately. Even if you don't think it got into very much, a very small amount can be really toxic to these guys. So we gotta make sure that we get it taken care of very quickly and that we start treatment for it very quickly. If we can get either the 4MP protocol or the alcohol protocol on board within the first couple hours of ingestion, the prognosis is dramatically in, uh, better. Uh, if it's something that's 24 hours later and they're starting to show clinical signs, what they'll do is start acting drunk it's it's almost too late and, and we'll end up with some irreversible kidney damage from that so uh, that's basically antifreeze luckily we're seeing a lot less of it i think people are using a lot better products i think we have newer cars out there it's not having as many side effects with that and just awareness in general uh, so keep keep your products away from pets toxin prevention in general what i would say is uh, don't have certain things don't have rat bait don't have antifreeze and then Household items, we do tend to see, we talked about marijuana a little bit, keep marijuana up, keep all of the trimmings, everything that you have associated with it away from your pet. I've seen every single type of thing you can possibly think of from creams to, to smoke inhalation, every cause issues with animals, so just keep it away. Uh, medications, obviously keep them up, keep them off of your shelves. I've had, I, you know, some people think, oh, it tastes bad, my pet's not gonna get into it. I've had people have an open bottle of Advil on their, their nightstand and their dogs got into it. And, and these things can, I mean, they'll, they'll, they can kill your pet. So just keep things up, keep things capped, and uh, just be aware of your surroundings. Make sure you're, uh, another one, make sure your pet's staying on your property. I, I, we do have a lot where they're going to the neighbor's house and, and your neighbor might be great, but they may have stuff out that you don't know about and your pets can find it. <laughs> so uh, that's basically it for toxin uh, prevention. And biggest thing is just be aware. Know if your dog gets into something, call us and, and we'll, we'll make sure that they're okay. Uh, so I think we got one more week. We'll come up with something cool for that one. Uh, otherwise, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you guys this spring. You know, it's getting warm outside. We're starting to see our, we'll, we'll probably have some parasite prevention pretty soon with all the new bugs that are, are awakening. Uh, and then, uh, but otherwise, uh, just give us a call. We'll see you, we'll see you at the clinic and get your pet treated.